Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just sitting here beside my spaghetti squash bed. I've got an interesting video today. I want to talk a little bit about overproduction. So as you can see, this bed is in a very interesting state right now. It is producing copious amounts of great looking spaghetti squash. But the foliage, I mean the plants look like they're about to die. So what is happening here is that the plants have gone into a fruiting stage quite early. You know, I don't usually get spaghetti squashes until, you know, probably September. And so these guys have gone into this fruiting stage very early uh, and something has triggered it. So after a little bit of research I've found that inducing plants into a fruiting stage usually happens because of two reasons. One is stress. You know plants going into fruiting that's the way they reproduce. So if the plant thinks it's gonna die it's gonna send out fruit uh, and it wants to do that so it can make seed so it can you know further on its genetics. And so what I think happened here, um, and the pot growers will know what I'm talking about, is I think these guys got a certain nutrient profile that induced them into flowering and fruiting before the plants were ready. You know, the plants were not big enough to support this size of fruit. You know, and the pot guys know this. They know that a certain phosphorus-nitrogen ratio can induce their plants to bud out um, when they want to start producing. So it's very interesting stuff um, and in the last five or six years I've noticed it mostly with um, zucchinis and squashes. They just start producing like mad too early um, and you get a lot of fruit early which is great but then the plant fizzles out so it's a little bit lower production overall but you kind of get it earlier which isn't too bad because it's early enough that once these guys fruit is done, uh, it's the middle of July now, probably the first week of August they can all come out. I can get another crop in there probably before my fall crop, which for these beds is gonna be garlic. So production overall of not just spaghetti squash, but you know, vegetable volume as a whole, these guys fruiting early, I'm probably coming out ahead. So I haven't quite figured out how to prevent this early overproduction, but you know, as we've discussed, I have figured out ways to turn it into an advantage and an opportunity to maximize my yields even further. So before we keep going, I just wanted to say uh, in terms of my farm and other farmers that I've talked to, overproduction can mean two different things. So let's clarify that right now. The overproduction that we're talking about right now is when a plant produces more than it can handle to sustain its life. The other meaning of overproduction on a small organic farm like this is you're producing more of a vegetable or product than you can consume. So two very different meanings. Maybe we'll save the discussion about overproduction of a vegetable uh, more than you can eat or consume uh, for another video down the road. So, it's been eight days since I made the basil video. And you can kind of see uh, how the basil has taken over. Uh, I'll throw a link to that basil video down below so you can check it out. Uh, but yeah, you can see that this basil is just going ahead like mad. And of course, uh, from the weeding video, you can see our little potato plant has come back to life. So, let's yank that guy over there now. Didn't get it all, so he will likely come back in a week. So, with this overproduction that we're talking about, you know, how do we turn it around so that we can benefit from it. So the first thing you got to do 
is you really got to take care of the plants. You got to make sure that this overproduction actually results in viable produce. Because a lot of times these plants will overproduce, but they won't produce anything of value. You know, the fruit will be small, it'll be stunted, it'll be shriveled up. You know, the, the plant could be overproducing because it's stressed. And so if it's stressed because of an environmental factor, well, maybe the conditions aren't good enough for this produce to be anything of value. So that's number one. You got to make sure its produce is actually productive. And so number two is sort of analogous to the different types of strawberry growth. You know, in strawberries, as we said before, there's ever bearing and June bearing. So the June bearing gives all their fruit at once. So I kind of treat this overproduction, this isolated overproduction, uh, as I would strawberries. You know, have a plan to either sell the excess because I'm not going to eat 30 spaghetti squashes in the span of two weeks. You know, have a plan for those spaghetti squashes. Either process and freeze them or have them for sale on your, your um, farm stand. The key is to have a plan so none of it goes to waste. Okay, so we've talked about the plan that you need for the produce. Now what do you do for the bed that it grows in? You know, you don't want a bed in limbo waiting for fall, you know, going fallow for two months in prime growing season. So you need a plan, you know, in, the, in this instance, what can I grow in sort of a two and a half month span at the heat of summer? You know, usually, given the variety of vegetable plants we can grow, you'll have several options. And really, it just becomes a personal preference. So with these two particular beds here, um, I know I'm a huge proponent of starter plants, but I might gut them, top them up with compost because I have excess of it right now, and I might do some stuff from seed. You know, get a quick crop of carrots in there. Wouldn't mind harvesting a few thousand baby carrots, you know, say middle of September. That'd be fantastic. You know, the last thing I want to do right now is plant up another tomato plant or another pepper plant. So, yeah, I'm going to kind of think outside the box. You know, two two by eight beds, that's 32 square feet of growing area. You know, there's a lot of options of what I could do. These guys are literally eating my greenhouse. Yep. That's nature. So you have many options available and it's all going to be determined based on the time of season it is and how much longer you have left to grow in that season. So say you've got, you know, a bed of these squashes and, you know, it lasts till August 20th and it's got to come out. Well, you know, depending on how your summer's going, you're getting pretty close to putting in your fall plants anyway. So what you might want to do is, is maybe just throw a quick crop of peas in there. You know, there wouldn't be time, you know, even to grow baby carrots, you're going to need at least eight weeks. Um, same with beets. Even if you harvest them small, you know, you're going to need a while. But there's time to grow, you know, peas, beans, maybe not beans. Um, but there's definitely time to grow a quick crop of uh, sugar snap peas. You know, even lettuces and spinaches, you can get a real quick crop and keep that bed going, keep it producing until you're ready to put in your fall plants. And so I also know that, you know, probably most of you watching this video don't have the time or energy to dedicate to this kind of stuff like I do. Um, and you might not care as much as I do. I just wanted to show you that there is options out there without a whole lot of effort that you can keep your bed growing and keep it producing for as long as possible, regardless of where you live. You know, oftentimes this overproduction, you know, could happen in something like peas and it really opens up the window for the next set of plants to come in. I'll throw a link down below to the succession planting video that I did last week. And this sort of overproduction, you know, could throw a bit of a monkey wrench into that, or it could open up the window for something like tomatoes to get in quicker and get even bigger faster 
because you're not really waiting on those peas to finish out their growing. And this is what makes this type of growing so fascinating to me is that the possibilities are endless. You know, in, in conventional farming, you know, your plot or your raised bed throws you a curveball. Well, that's it. You know, you just dig it all up and wait for next spring. No, man. You know, a curveball is thrown at you in your garden. It is instantly an opportunity for a new set of plants to come in and produce great results for you. You know, when I see something like, like those squash beds in my garden, you know, automatically my mind starts working overtime trying to think of the possibilities that I can do for when those squash have to come out. You know, because I'm in the train of thought that, okay, you know, the squash are going to last till September. I'll be harvesting them, you know, the latter, latter third of summer. They come out, then the fall crop goes in. That's great if it works out that way because, you know, when I designed this year's planting, that's how I saw it going. So when that doesn't happen, but I'm given an opportunity for a fairly large window to grow something else in there, you know, increasing my production of those beds by 20 to 30% for the season, you know, that's got to get you excited. You know, it, it, it's almost considered like free production. You know, it's a complete bonus. I think so. this just exemplifies that, you know, any little setback that you see in your garden, it's actually an opportunity. You know, an opportunity to just get some more crops in when you didn't expect it. So just to wrap up here, uh, I hope you guys found this interesting. You know, you're going to come across instances like this in your garden. If you got more than a couple raised beds and you start growing different things every season, you're going to come across this. Hopefully it was a cool spin on something that either you've seen before and you didn't know how to deal with it or something you've never seen before and now you're excited for it to happen. You know, you want one of your beds to overproduce so that you can quickly get something different in there. Yeah, hopefully I showed you how you can do that. So that's it for the vid. Uh, it's getting super hot. I got to go do something, have a beer or something because it's uh, too hot to work in the garden right now. So, you know, thanks for joining me. Click subscribe if you get a chance. You know, I'd really like to grow this channel like I grow my garden. Wild and crazy at times, but highly productive, you know, and yields through the roof. Once again, thanks for sticking through to the end, and we'll see you in the next video. Speaking of overproduction... <laughs>